In the early hours of the 7th of November 2014, Joseph Parker called 911 and told the operator the most horrifying thing. On, on, the, on the 4th, which would have been two nights ago at 4 a.m., I shot my wife in the temple of her head. I thought I killed her. Um, I put her in the freezer out in the garage. Joseph had just confessed to murdering his wife and to then having put her in the freezer. But miraculously, after 48 hours, he believed her to still be alive. Well, I checked on her at night and she's not dead. Got a big hole in the temple of her head and um, get her body moved around in there. I think I broke her wrist. You know, she was frozen from being in the, in the thing she'd been seeing 48 hours now. You'll see her once you get in the garage. Man, she can't talk. I could get her blink once, means yes, blink twice, means no. She's been frozen. For two days, she's frozen solid. It's amazing she's still alive. He asked the dispatcher to send out paramedics to help his wife, as he said he still loved her and cared for her. But contrary to what Joseph had said, when police arrived at the couple's home, they found Samantha Parker dead and stuffed inside the freezer, her body partially dismembered. And Joseph Parker was nowhere to be found. Was this true? Had Joseph really done this to his own wife? And was Joseph capable of murdering again? The hunt was on and police urgently tried to find Joseph Parker before he took someone else's life. Samantha Klaus Parker was born on the 16th of August, 1970, in Ohio to her parents David Klaus and Peggy Ann Bryant Klaus. She attended Greenbrier High School and then worked at Baker's Market for several years. Samantha was described as an outgoing person and as someone who loved and enjoyed taking care of other people. Friends and family said she was a free spirit who loved others, was always happy and willing to help anyone who needed her. She loved football, going to Panama City Beach, her grandchildren, going shopping, country music, playing softball, and just spending time with those that she loved. On the other hand, however, very little is known about her husband, Joseph Parker, but it's believed that they married on the 4th of November 2002, and that they had one daughter together in 1992, called Mackenzie. In 2014, Joseph and Samantha were living at 246 Clydesdale Lane in Springfield, Tennessee, and sadly Joseph had lost his job and their house was in foreclosure, so times were difficult for the couple. They did, however, have something to look forward to and to celebrate, as their 12th wedding anniversary was fast approaching on the 4th of November. But despite the happy occasion, something obviously had gone drastically wrong that day, as 48 hours later, Joseph Parker called 911 saying that he had shot his wife in the temple. At 2.45 a.m. on the 7th of November 2014, Joseph Parker called 911 and told the authorities that he had murdered his wife at their home. He told the dispatcher that he had shot his wife in the head with a 38 caliber handgun two days ago at about 4 a.m. on their 12th wedding anniversary. 911 location of your emergency? Yeah, 246 Clydesdale Lane. In Springfield? Y-E-S-C-A-L-E. You're in Springfield? Yeah, Springfield, Tennessee. It's uh, right behind Oakland Farm. Okay, what's going on? Alright, this is what's happened. I've been married 12 years on, on, the, on the 4th, which would have been two nights ago at 4 a.m. I shot my wife in the temple of her head. I thought I killed her. Horrifyingly, he then proceeded to tell the dispatcher that he had put her body in the freezer and that she had been there for over 48 hours. Um, I put her in the freezer out in the garage. Now, I'm not sure if Joseph was imagining things or if he was purely lying, but shockingly, he then told the dispatcher that he thought his wife was still alive, as when he had last checked on her, she was moving. Well, I checked on her at night and she's not dead. Got a big hole in the temple of her head. Um, get her body moved around in there. I think I broke her wrist. You know, she was frozen from being in the, in the thing she'd been in 48 hours now. Joseph then told the dispatcher that he had left the property and that he wanted someone to go over 
and to check on his wife as he still loved her. No prank call. I need somebody to get out there and help her. I've cleared, I've cleared the premises. I've got away. You know, I'm not going to be there. But I, I promise you this is a legit call, and I need somebody to get out there and help her because I, I, I still love her. It's hard to believe that after that, you know, but, um, you know, I, I need to get somebody out there to help her. Okay, what what, I, what happened that what caused you to do that? Um, it, it's a long story. Don't want to get into it. Just want to want to get into somebody out there to help her. It's, I left the front door open. I left all the lights on in the house, so it would be kind of easy to spot. It's the last house on the right on Plattsville Lane. But I left the front door open, and she's in the garage to go through the kitchen to get into the garage. You'll see her once you get in the garage. And, Man, she can't call. I could get her blink once, means yes, blink twice, means no. You know, so I told her, I'm going around the road, 10, 15 miles, I'm going to call 911 and get you some help out here. I, I thought she'd been dead two days. And when I checked on her, she's alive. She's been frozen for two days. She's frozen solid. It's amazing she's still alive. Got a big, big hole in the temple of her head. I shot her with a 38 caliber handgun, and uh, there's a big hole in the temple of her head. I didn't see an exit wound. The dispatcher then pressed on and asked Joseph more questions, where he then proceeded to tell her that they did not have a history of violence and that the police had never been involved with them. What is her name? Samantha Parker. Is she a white female? Yes. How old is she? Uh, 43 years old. And how long ago did you leave there? An hour ago. And that's the last time you saw her? Yes, that's the last time I saw her. And she was still in the garage? Still in the garage. I made her as comfortable as I could make her. She tried to drink a little water. I made her jaw. She's, she's in bad shape. Really need to get somebody out there to help her. And the address is 246 Clodsdale Lane? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what is your name? My name is Joe. I'm just leaving it there. Don't want me to get arrested tonight and all that. So, uh, we, we don't have a history of domestic disputes. You know, we've never had to call police or nothing. We just had a real bad night a couple of nights ago. We've been going around and got ourselves in trouble. So, um, we really need to make it out there and help her. Okay, we'll send somebody out there to her. Joseph then carried on expressing his love towards his wife. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like urgent. I, you know, I think she's dying. You know, uh, she got a a big hole where the temple, you know, the temple of your head is, you know what I mean? Right. So please, you know, I, I love her, I still love her, you know, I, I've loved her every day I've been married to her, you know, it's a rough stretch here, and, uh, anyway, check on her, and she's still alive, and now I want to get her, somebody to help her to know what they're doing. I guess they the call finished off with Joseph restating the conditions in which he had left his house and how his wife would most likely need medical attention. Okay, we'll send somebody out there. Right, what, what was your first name? I'm not going to give you my name, sir. Okay, that's fine. Hey, make a note on there. The fr I left the front door open and all the lights are on. You know, the garage, you can't yell for you. Can't yell. But you go to the garage, so that's where you'll see her once you get to the garage. Okay. We'll send somebody out there. If she needs, you know, paramedics, she needs, she needs everything. She needs an ambulance. You know, she needs, she needs trauma. She's trauma. I mean, she's a trauma face. She might need a helicopter. Um, you know, so please get somebody to her. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. When police arrived at the property, they found 44-year-old Samantha Parker in the garage at the home, and she was pronounced dead at the scene. Samantha's body was partially dismembered and stuffed into a freezer, and there was no way that she was alive. Russell Gumpton, Robertson County Emergency Medical Services Assistant Director said, there was no possibility of her being alive at all. He suggested that Joseph Parker was lying or imagining things when he had spoken to the dispatcher. 
Springfield Police Detective Madison Burnett, the lead investigator on the case, confirmed that Samantha Parker had been shot in the head, but that they weren't exactly sure where she was killed and how she had died. The detective said, I don't know if we're going to be able to determine when he killed her, exactly. I'm not sure at this point whether we'll be able to determine how long she'd been in the freezer. As investigators searched the house, they noticed how clean the home was. One of the detectives said, It was immaculate, not a speck of dust, spotless. It was real estate clean. Joseph Parker himself, however, was nowhere to be found, and they needed to find him as quickly as possible, so the search was on. After the discovery of his wife's body, dispatchers called Joseph Parker back at about 3.45am and he told them he was on the interstate, headed to Chattanooga to visit friends. Later that same day at noon, police issued a warrant charging Joseph Parker with Samantha Parker's murder, as the news spread throughout the public of what had happened in the quiet neighbourhood in Springfield, the couple's neighbours couldn't contain their shock. The images of the way this Springfield neighbourhood looked three days ago It's just sad. cannot be shaken from the mind of Brandy Gaines. Um, I catch myself every time I come outside, I do look over there. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I just, I look and it just, it makes you just stay. The image of just knowing that she was in there, you know, and the way that it happened, it just, it, it just makes you sad. Chloe Crabtree, who lived with her parents next door to the Parkers, describes Joseph Parker as a very stern man who kept to himself. She said, I didn't really see them go out. He did. He always parked inside the garage, and I would see him leaving in the mornings. I rarely saw her car leave. They were very quiet, the kind of people who never left the blinds open. Chloe said that the last time she saw Joseph Parker, was two days before the incident, when he was leaving the couple's home at about 5.30pm. However, she said she noticed something strange at the home at about 1.30am on Friday. I was walking my dog, and I saw their backlight come on, so someone was definitely in there. I thought it was unusual, because they're never really up that early. Another neighbour, Rhonda Haley, had lived across the street from the Parkers for the past eight years. Haley described the Parkers as a bit reclusive and always keeping to themselves. She said, I never really talked to them and I never saw him chatting with neighbours or anything. Usually he would be working in the yard or working on his car. He would wave or nod at you when he drove by. As for Samantha Parker, Haley said she rarely left the house, saying, It's kind of scary. You don't see that every morning when you get up, that your neighbour has killed his wife, and so it is a little unnerving. Something had to have happened to him, or to her, something. As the search progressed, as per the request of the Springfield Police Department, the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation added Joseph Parker to its top 10 most wanted list. Police also ended up setting up a command at the Rivergate Toyota dealership, Joseph's old place of work, as Joseph had supposedly threatened to go there and kill multiple people. So with a helicopter flying up overhead, they were prepared in case he did do this. Finally, police were able to ping Joseph Parker's cell phone in Nashville, so they started looking for him there. Metro Nashville police then spotted his white 2007 Toyota Camry driving on the I-65, so they started following it. A car chase had begun, and Joseph Parker was being pursued by the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation and the US Marshals Service, in addition to local officials from Tennessee and Kentucky. The car chase, however, came drastically to an end when they stopped Joseph's car near mile marker 12 and inside the vehicle, they found Joseph Parker dead with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. Metro officers followed him all the way to the state line. That's when Kentucky State Police pulled Parker over on Interstate 65. While units were conveying in on the car, uh, Mr. Parker took his own life while sitting in his white Toyota Camry. A year to the day after this horrible tragedy, friends and family of the Parkers gathered together to release balloons and to remember Samantha Parker. Samantha and Joseph's daughter, Mackenzie Parker, was present, and she said she was there to honour not only her mother's life, but also her father's, saying, Today I find myself missing both of them equally. A lot of people ask me why I'm not angry. They showed me what I would like to have in a marriage someday. It was a very bad night, and I think he just snapped. 
I know my dad lost his job and the house was in foreclosure. The memories and moments are what you want to hold on to. Mackenzie, who was 23 at this point, said she was determined not to relive her worst day as she addressed the crowd of the memorial. She said that coming to terms with the loss of her parents was a daily and sometimes hourly struggle, but memories of happier times together, especially those of her mother, helped her get through her darkest hours. She said, She was a great mother. She taught me right from wrong. She taught me left from right. She taught me what respect was. She taught me how to be nice, how to love, how to be kind, how to be sweet, you name it. I love her and I miss her, and I will until the end of time. She loved me from the time that I took my first breath until the day that she took her last, and I'm forever grateful for those 22 years of my life with her. That was the hardest thing that I ever had to go through. It was the hardest thing I will ever experience in my life. I'm completely in awe in Mackenzie's strength, but she said that it was by the grace of God that she'd learned to forgive her father, and that despite the pain, the memorial was meant to be a celebration of her mother's life. Samantha Parker's best friend and cousin, Jenny Klaus Shrive, stated that Mackenzie's mother would have been very proud of the way she'd handled the past year, saying, You have held on with more strength than any person I've ever seen. You've taught us all about forgiveness. We all want to be like you. We love you. To have the forgiveness in your heart and peace, you know she was raised by good parents. Linda Hand, who had known Samantha for 30 years, said, Everybody knew Sam. She was just so full of life. She was a hard worker and she was so funny. We really miss her for that. She was a really sweet person, a special person. It helps to remember the good times together and it means a lot for those of us who know Mackenzie, for us to be able to help her get through it because it was so tough on her. Not only did she lose her mum, but she also lost her dad. Joe Parker was a good guy. I think he just snapped. This case is just so heartbreaking. I guess we'll never really know what caused Joe to murder his wife that day and exactly how he did it. I think Mackenzie's right. I think that day he must have just snapped. And in my opinion, on the 911 call, Joe doesn't seem to be of sound mind. He sounds intoxicated and slurred to me, but then again, I'm not sure what he would have normally sounded like. Anyway, as always, my heart goes out to everyone impacted by Joe's cruel actions, especially to Mackenzie, who I'm sure has grown up to be an incredible woman today. Her strength and courage during this unimaginable time is so mind-blowing to me, and I hope that wherever she is today, she is doing well. And finally, rest in peace to her mother, Samantha Parker.